Good evening, folks. It's late in the afternoon. Well, it's night time. It's about 11.30, maybe quarter to 12, 12 o'clock, somewhere in that area. Today is June the 13th, 2017. Hi, my name is James Miller. I'm a local evangelist here in the Covington, New Orleans, Louisiana area. And I'm just here to give you a testimony. Many of you have seen my videos, me street preaching, but I've known uh, to be the street preacher in the Covington, Manville area, um, Beater Springs area, uh, because I'm the only one out here doing this. And the police know me and the people know me and all that. They all know me as the old street preacher. But nevertheless, I want to give you a little bit of background on myself. Uh, I want to give you a testimony tonight. Uh, my name is James Miller. Born in 1952, I was premature. My mother had to have a C-section where they cut you out of the belly, and I only weighed two pounds. Now back then in 1952, they didn't have the medical knowledge or the equipment to keep children alive like they do today. And they told my mom that I wouldn't live and uh, go home and make funeral plans for me. And, but the Lord seen that He had something planned for me, and here I am. Amen, praise God. But, uh, you know, I lived in the streets of New Orleans when I was a kid. I was very poor. My mother and father was poor. Uh, my daddy was an alcoholic and a womanizer, and he didn't work much, and we didn't get to eat much. I went to bed many nights hungry, my mother and I, while my daddy was running the streets getting drunk. And uh, I wore many other, many clothes that were worn by the people hand-me-downs, and I wore my uncle's shoes, 12, 13 years old, I wear my uncle's shoes. And, I'd put newspaper in the toes and the heels and tie them up and stay them on, keep them on, so they could stay fit and tight, you know. But uh, and then 1957, uh, 1950, about 58, 58, 59, I was sexually molested twice by a family member, and then also in those years between 57, 58 to 1963, 64. I would sell peanuts and papers and shine shoes on the corner canal and grandpa with my grandma and grandpa. Well, nevertheless, like I said, I was, I was raised poor. And my dad, he would throw rocks at me and curse me. He would call me names and stuff like that and hit me with sticks. But nevertheless, I loved my daddy. He was my dad and I loved him. I loved him dearly. Well, you know, uh, I raised, uh, I lived in the streets and when I was seven years old, I would, so I was going to hit the streets, so, you know, when my mom would go to bed at night, 10, 11, 12 o'clock at night, and I'd crawl out the window, go out the back door, and I'd go hit the streets, and I would peep in people's windows and pick up cigarette butts off the ground and, and stuff like that, and run the streets. And uh, around 12 years old, maybe 13 years old, I started drinking and stuff like that, and smoking cigarettes. And, and at the early age, around 16, 15, 16, I started getting on weed and then harder drugs. And before I knew it, I was on cocaine and stuff like that. And uh, when I was 18 years old, I stole a car with another fellow friend of mine and another girl. And brand new car and new credit cards. And we went out west. And back in 1970, with a new car, they thought we was rock stars. And we went all over San Francisco with the hippies. And we was up in Boulder, Colorado. And and stuff like that. In fact, over Colorado, when we arrived, it was about three o'clock in the morning. I was standing on the corner, and they had some guy had a knapsack in his back, and him and I had a few words. And before I knew it, he didn't pull a machete out of his knapsack. Fool, get ready to cut my head off. Well, the friend of mine I was with, he stopped him. Praise God. So you know, I was getting close. I was close to a head cutting job, right? Amen. So the Lord seemed fit for that too. And then you know. Um, Came back, I came back for myself and uh, got into the drug scene, heavy drug scene, and stuff like that. And uh, when I was about 20 years old, uh, I got into the weights and bodybuilding and, and powerlifting and stuff like that for the next 42 years. When I became very muscular man, I lost 40 some more pounds of muscle. And uh, I used to like to fight. So, you know, I got a job in barrooms and lounges, and I was a bouncer and a doorman and stuff like that. And I was a private body go for some of the rich. In fact, 1979, I worked at the Rolling Stone, Van Halen, and Doobie Brothers. I did the, the first Sticky Fingers concert. The air conditioner went off, it makes a lot of noise. Uh, I did the Sticky Fingers concert, and I was on stage with the Stone, Van Halen, and Doobie Brothers, at the Superdome. 
And I thought it was a big shot and all that stuff. But you know, if I'd have died back then, I, I would have went to hell. You know, and, and uh, you know, but I had a call in my life ever since I was a little boy to, to, to preach the gospel of Christ and be, get right with the Lord. And I ran and I ran and I ran. And uh, I, I, I just got tired of running, you know? I mean, while I was running from Christ, on the outside I was laughing, I was a life of the party, but deep down inside I was, I was miserable, man, because I know I was running. And I was scared, I didn't want to go to hell. And uh, so, uh, about 1983, I was working on the Harley Davidson motorcycle in my, in my shed. It was very cold, and it gets nasty and cold down here in, in New Orleans, Louisiana. And it was cold, and uh, I was drinking beer and smoking weed. I was shed all by myself on the motorcycle. And uh, I heard somebody tell me, he said, hey, you going to go to hell? Well, I thought it was one of my friends when I came outside. So I went outside and I was yeah, you are too. So I looked for him and I couldn't find nobody. So I went back into the barn, uh, I'm sorry, the shed. And uh, about five minutes later, I heard somebody say, you're going to go to hell. And I said, yeah, you are too. I said, why don't you just come on in, man, it's cold out there. Well, nobody came in after about 20 minutes. And I had a picture of Jesus. You see, I always did believe in Christ. I just wasn't following him. And I had a picture of Christ, and he has his, he has his hands out like this. And he's got a picture of his heart, and flames are coming from his heart. And he says, I love you. I love you with all my heart. I love you. So I looked at this picture, and I started talking to this picture. I said, Jesus, is that you talking to me? Well, I had a conversation with this picture, and Jesus said, that's me. I said, well, what do you want me to do, Lord? He said, I want you to sell your motorcycle. I said, gee, Lord, said, that'd be like cutting the arm off. He said, it's best to go to heaven with one arm and I'll restore it than go to hell with two. So I got to thinking, I said, what else you want me to do? He said, I want you to quit your fighting and quit the drugs and, the, and, and, and alcohol. I said, Lord, that's like cutting my other arm off. He said, again, it's better to go to heaven with two arms and I'll restore them for you and give you new ones than go to hell with two and be tormented. Well, I went inside and told my wife, I said, hey, I was just talking to Jesus out there, and he told me to quit everything and sell my motorcycle. Well, she knew how I loved my drugs and my alcohol and my fighting and the motorcycle stuff, and she said, sit down. She thought I flipped out or something. She said, sit down. Well, I didn't get born again right then and there. It was about two weeks later, you know, because I always read the Bible here and there, you know. And it was like, funny. Every time I smoked weed, I wanted to read the Bible. So, you know, and... Uh, about two weeks later, about seven o'clock in the morning, I was down in Delacro, Louisiana, a little fishing community, and uh, I was smoking weed with this guy, and he was an atheist, and I was sitting across the table from him, and we started to smoke weed, and uh, he had a bunch of joints on, on the table there, and I looked at him, and all of a sudden, I got high, he had the best weed you could get, and, and, and I got high, and everything behind him, and even him, everything looked beautiful, and I remember we a scripture, where it says, be not deceived, the devil come to his angel of light, you know? And uh, so I, I told him, I said, man, I said, I'm quit smoking weed, man. I said, I just heard from Jesus, I'm, I'm going, and he was an atheist. And he laughed at me, so I got him left, and within two blocks, I bawled my eyes out and cried to God and became born again. Well, I went home and told my wife, I'm born again, I'm quitting, I'm quitting, I'm quitting. And uh, so she didn't, Believe me at first, you know whenever you're a drug addict or alcoholic, it's very hard sometimes to get drugs and alcohol. But as soon as you get born again, it seems like Satan just floods you with drugs and alcohol. Well, the next day, people come on over with drugs, and I told them, I, I'm not doing no more drugs because I, I accepted Jesus. And, and uh, they said, well, you, oh, well, your wife shall do some drugs with us. And she said, no, I'm going to follow my husband. Well, I've been walking the Lord ever since, 34 years and preaching and stuff like that. You know, when a lot of people want to say, you know, it's man. You know, a lot of people think that once you accept Christ, everything is beautiful and sweet by by and pie in the sky and all that. But it's just not like that. You know, at least it wasn't with me. I mean, when I accepted Christ 34 years ago, from that minute I accepted Christ, Satan opened up the gates of hell against me. I've had more things wrong with me. I death knocked at my door. Uh, in 1996, I was diagnosed with melanoma cancer. I didn't even know I had it. I took my son to the doctor and I said, Doc, look at this. He took a biopsy and about five days later, he, he came back and said, listen, man, you have 
melanoma cancer, and she, we don't know how bad it is. Well, that Wednesday I went to Charity Hospital, and Monday morning they had me on an operating table ripping me open five hour surgery. They took all my lymph nodes out of my left arm and took three quarters of my bicep out of my, uh, out of my arm. Well, while I was on an operating table, I was going into a cardiac arrest. Well, another time, and Satan tried to kill me, and God said, No, I've got plans for this boy, you know. So it was 1996, and I, it was a rough surgery, and I made it through, praise God. And then 1998, my mama passed away. She went home to be with the Lord, and uh, we prayed with mom, and she believed, and I prayed with her before she, a couple of days before she died. I'd work in the daytime, and I'd go take care at night. And uh, I told her when she sees Jesus, she's telling hi from him, give him a hug. She said she sure wouldn't. Well, my mama died on my birthday. And uh, that was a low blow. My mother died on my birthday. And she died two days before Mother's Day. We laid her out on Mother's Day. And uh, every so many years, Mother's Day falls on my daddy's birthday. I mean, uh, every, uh, my birthday, I'm sorry, every, 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 uh, every year, Every so many years, my Mother's Day fall, I'll get it right. Every so many years, <clears throat> the death of my mom and my birthday falls on Mother's Day. Well, two years after that, my little brother, 22 years old, he had the same daddy I had, he couldn't hang on, and uh, he committed suicide, he hung himself. Uh, I did his eulogy, and you know, I loved my daddy, you know, no matter what my daddy had done to me, I loved him. You know, the Bible says, honor your mother and father. Not only if they got money or they're good to you, but it says, honor your mother and father, no matter what they do to you. Well, a couple of years after my little brother, after, after a couple of years after my little brother died, and a couple of years after Katrina, and Katrina was hard on us, because uh, we, we didn't have electricity like for four months. And it was hot, sweltering heat, living with no electricity down here. Well, uh, my daddy, a couple of years after Katrina, he killed himself also, accidentally. But, uh, and I closed my mother's eyes physically, and I closed, closed my daddy's eyes, but my conscience was cleared because before my daddy died, he told me, he says, uh, you know, as bad as I've treated you and called your name and hit you and stuff like that, she was always there for me whenever I was down and out needed. So, you know, I, 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 my conscience was cleared when my dad passed away. Now, saying that, and then a couple of years right after that, my, my wife, my darling wife, got ran over by an automobile and she had to learn how to walk all over again. So while she's in the process of being laid up and had to walk, I had to take her to the doctors, physical therapy, take care at home, fix and clean the house, take care of dogs, work, and I was preaching at a little church every second Wednesday. And, uh, you know, but praise God, God gives a man strength if he just leans upon the Lord. Well, then I kept on going and then, uh, oh, I got put in jail and. Oh, about 30 years ago for preaching the gospel, they brought me to jail and then they wouldn't let me out of jail so they brought me to the mental institution trying to get me put in the mental institution. Well, I got to preaching to the, to the head shrink over there and he, uh, he got scared and I told him he was going to die and go to hell and, and I told him keep me in his mental institution as long as he wants. They're going to have to feed me, they're going to have to uh, take care of me and pay for my electric bill and stuff like that. And I told him, I said, listen, as long as you leave me in this mental hospital, the more people's going to get born again except Christ. I said, you're going to have a lot of your staff born again. And when he got scared, and he kicked me out of the mental institution for Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. And then uh, uh, about a year and a half ago, I, I was diagnosed with a tumor. Weared down in my throat by my esophagus, and I only had a little bit of hole left in my throat. I could swallow. I couldn't eat. And I lost like 40 pounds. And uh, they went down there and praised God. It wasn't cancerous. They took it out. They said it may come back. That's why my voice goes ho hoarse on me sometimes. And, uh, and, but I'm out there preaching and yelling and screaming and praising God and worshiping God and amen. So, uh, you know, but I want to tell you that that's my testimony. I'm 65 years old. And uh, as long as my old body holds up, and I mean, it gets hard on me to preach out there in the summertime and down here in New Orleans area because it gets 100, 100, 200, 300 degrees even 100% humidity and I got to wear long sleeve clothes and a hat and long pants and I got to wear sunglasses due to the melanoma camp so I can't be in the sun and it gets pretty hard on me you know I have uh, uh, three bad lower discs in my back I got pinched, two pinched nerves in my neck uh, I have uh, I need shoulder surgery and I got a bad knee 
So seeing all that, it gets hard in the soul, boy, but you know, uh, I feel like uh, as long as my bones hold up and I can get out there and praise God, I'm going to be preaching to him 80, 90 years old unless Jesus comes tomorrow. Uh, or unless I pass, it, pass on and go home to glory. But uh, if the Lord don't come in another 10, 15 years, but I believe he's coming real soon. I believe he's coming very, 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 very soon. But nevertheless, if he allows me to be here or, or in the next 20 years, I'll be, I hope to be preaching when I'm 80, 90 or, or whatever. But you know, I, I, I want to say one more thing. This is not my testimony, but I want to preach to a lot of you, 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 you uh, street preachers out there I noticed that a lot of y'all call people names and, and uh, you know, I mean, I'm sure your heart means well, but you get out there and you call the homosexuals faggots and uh, you hope they get AIDS and you call us the, 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 the whoremongers and the whores, you call them uh, uh, sluts and stuff like that and hope you get yeast infection and, you know, this is not preaching the gospel of Christ. I mean, I preach fire and brimstone, and I preach the love of Christ also. But I can preach a fire and brimstone message and tell a homosexual that he's going to go to hell if he don't get born again and quit his lifestyle. I don't have to stoop low and call him a name. I don't have to degrade him. Uh, he's already degraded. I mean, uh, you know, if a woman is a whore, I don't have to call her a slut or a whore. I'll just tell them what you're doing will put you in hell and unless you repent of your sins that you will die and go to hell. I don't have to to, 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 to lower myself and my standards to, to call her names and stuff like that. But, you know, uh, you can preach a fine brimstone message hard, but with the kind kind of tone, you know. You can holler if you want, but you know, you, and I holler because I got a big mouth. Uh, I'm a John Baptist style preacher, but uh, I am not into the name calling and wishing somebody gets AIDS or stuff like that. You know, and you, you, know, you know, a lot of you young bucks, man, I've been doing this 34 years and, and uh, you know, take it easy out there, man, because I, I see a lot of y'all, man, I mean, y'all dressed up in y'all shirts and y'all hoodies and all that and got scriptures and Jesus stuff all over you. I mean, to me, as far as I'm concerned, that's a show. you showboating. Uh, I'm not going out there with no scriptures all over me. I'm going to put the scriptures on through my mouth and, 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 and out into the streets and with my Bible in my hand. I don't have to have scriptures written all over me. To me, that's, that's kind of like, uh, it's a pride. It's a pride. Look at me. Uh, uh, I got a scripture shirt, you know, and then a lot of them out there preaching. And to me, it's a, it's a hatred preach, and they seem like they they um, they they bitter about something that in their life, and they're going to take it out with the gospel on somebody else. But you know, you uh, you can preach a hard gospel without being aggravated, mean, and angry at people. You know, if you want to get angry, get angry at the devil for for having control over those people, because you once yourself was a sinner. You once yourself was a drug addict, a homosexual, an atheist, or, or, or a whore, or, or no matter, whatever, you know. So remember that then. You was once one of them, you know, and uh, you, know, you need to realize that you can preach to them the hard way, but do it with a, a, a gentler, gentle heart where they know that they hear in Jesus Christ out here. I mean, uh, not everybody a priest accepts the gospel. They hear shot me, spit at me, call me names, curse me, and stuff like that, threaten to put me in jail. But I, if you look at my videos, you can you can sign in them. You can uh, 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 subscribe to my, my channel. Sorry about that. I'm getting over my mind. Sometimes it skips. <laughs> but you know, uh, you can subscribe to the video Trumpet of Truth Ministries, Jimmy Miller, and uh, you can look at some other videos and, and uh, appreciate it. And uh, you can make any comments. Uh, get a lot of ugly comments, and that's okay. That goes with the, with the territory, amen? Praise God. So I just want to tell each and every one of you tonight that Jesus loves you, man. No matter who you are, what you've done in your life, Jesus loves you. He died for you. <coughs> he don't want you to die and go to hell. He wants you to get born again. <coughs> Excuse me. So, if you will, if you're born again, if you're not born again, get on your knees tonight and tell Jesus that you love him and Change your ways of living because you may die tonight. You may die tonight. You don't know. Today may be your last day on earth. Today may be my last day on earth. And we have to live that way. We have to live with wisdom. You 
might have put your shoes on your feet today, but you can't promise yourself that an undertaker won't take it off. Give yourself to Jesus today. And I tell you what, I'm a happy, joyful guy, man. I, I, I don't need drugs. I don't need nothing. All I need is Jesus. And he takes away the pain mentally, physically, spiritually. And one day, we'll walk on those streets of gold. God bless you, man. Repent, America. Repent, America. Repent, America. Thank you for listening to what I have to say, and I hope you watch my channel. God bless you, man.